Okay, this is Jacob Schmidt with DeerHuntingSchool.com. Uh, Eamon, I appreciate you uh, letting me take a look at this, and I hope I can help you out um, here on your uh, club um, that you're hunting on. And, um, you know, the first thing I'm going to just kind of talk about is just, just we're going to look at some other pictures in, in a couple. i got several different pictures I've, I've took, and or a couple pictures I've took, and then uh, the ones you sent me, and then we're going to look at it on Google Earth and stuff. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is the, um, look at a couple of these pictures here of this area, <clears throat> and you had said that, uh, you know, you couldn't put a stand within 200 yards of any of these, and I, I really got to looking a lot of these, and a lot of it, and that's, that only leaves certain areas, but I looked, looked over real well, um, look this area over real well and there are a couple areas that I really think are um, have really been almost neglected as far as um, some spots I think that are, have really been overlooked and I'm just gonna give you some ideas and stuff and you'll have to check them out um, and look at them and that's you know that's one thing about looking at aerial photos you look and you see and then you have to actually go in and and look at it and see what's what's actually there and um, you know, look at it, but there's a couple spots um, that are away from a couple of these, at least 200 yards. There's one spot that is that is a little too close to another stand, but I mean, it is, it looks really good from aerial photo at least. Um, some of these stands I looked over, and I, you know, I haven't walked the ground. And that's one thing is that you're always going to find. I mean, you can find stands that make no, you, you just can't see them on aerial photo at all. Um, but then when you actually walk it, you can find some some stands that, that make sense. But there's some of these that I looked at don't even make any sense while they're there um, to me, really. And, and to be honest with you, there's some of them I, I really feel like if I even walked the ground, I wouldn't even hunt um, out, of the, out of all these stands. Um, you know, here, this one here is the one um, that I wish was just a little bit further away, because right here, and you can't see it in this picture, um, you can't even, you can barely see it in Google Earth, but um, when you go to Bing Maps and you go to Bird's Eye View and zoom in on that, which I've done, I didn't actually t snap a picture of it because it's, uh, this one's too close, but, I, you know, you can see the, you know, I'm pointing it out, and I'll talk about it, and I'll talk about it again in a minute. But this is this is that one stand right here that it looks really good. This creates a just a perfect funnel, and there's a creek running down through there. Um, I mean, it just creates um, what looks like to be a really good funnel. Um, but you know, this stand here is too too close, and I believe your stand that you're thinking about putting in or, or wanting to put in is right right in here. Um, which when I look at that, where you sent me is, is, is too close to all three of these. Um, it's closer than if you had to stand here to this one. So I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, I measured it out on Google Earth and, and it looked, uh, uh, 200 yards. Actually, let's just go here and, uh, see this stand here is setting here. At least that's the concordance you gave me. Um, is right here okay but then when I look I look here um, it looks like that stand would be you know if I look here it's just this little point and it's just right off it looks like that stand would actually be closer um, to these other these other three stands that's right around it then then if you was to put one here to this stand okay I mean it's just I me and then you also have I put this here here because you have a, a funnel that runs up through here. It's a pretty wide funnel. I don't know if you're gun hunting or bow hunting. Um, you know, if you're gun hunting, you could probably get away with it. But then you'd have to really be careful because there's a house right here. Um, so I don't know if I would want to gun hunt that myself. Um, you know, because you're you're within 150 yards of a house. Um, you know, you'd have to be super, super careful there. But but there is a funnel here a little bit, and there's there's one here um, 
as well but this one right here looks nice if you notice that creek right here um, them bucks they like running down creeks especially in the rut um, in rivers and stuff they like running on the edges of them uh, and that's just a good funnel up through here you know I, I think that would be a spot I would like to check out if it was me but you're gonna be this stand where you showed me uh, is right in here and we'll go back to that picture and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about this stands right like right in here and if you measure that out on Google Earth it's like I think it's like 167 yards or something we'll measure it again real quick uh, yeah it's like 165 yards or whatever um, but like I said, when I look, when I move this here, when I look here, 200 yards from this stand, uh, puts you well within 200 yards of any of them other stands that's on that point there. I mean, we're, we're looking at an area something like that, um, you know, and then we'll go back to that picture and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Where in the heck? Okay. Sorry. I, see, if you put a stand here, I mean, 200 yards was like here. And you're well within 200 yards of that one, that one, and that one. So, I, you know, I don't know um, if they let that slide in some cases. Um, but if so, I mean, you could possibly have a stand here. And I'm going to show you. You, don't, you said you could only have three registered stands. I don't know if you have the two that you showed me already registered. But I'm going to show you more than three spots that look pretty good and I'm going to talk about it and why they look good okay and then that way you can go in and you, you see what you're looking for basically you're, you're looking for a, a rutting a funnel that bucks travel in the rut um, in any funnels that I, that I talk about you're and <clears throat> the time of year that we're looking at I mean it's October 16th right now um, if you're looking for uh, a stand right now I'm looking I would be looking for a rutting stand because I mean anywhere you're at in the country except unless you're late maybe in, in really south southern Mississippi and stuff I mean we're talking these deer are fixing to be rutting a week and a half uh, two weeks they're gonna be in the seeking phase and they're really gonna start traveling some ground and in that time um, if you can get in funnels that, that, that bucks use a lot I mean, you can tell them when you get into these spots by looking for, you know, rubs and stuff from last year. Um, and there may be some this year, but but really rubs that were made last year uh, running along these paths. Now, I know, you know, this is off the property, but, you know, still you should have some rubs up through here somewhere. And then this, this was a funnel, same way. This one here is actually, um, I measured it out, I believe it is 200 yards. This one's too clear of these other stands. Here and this one here is two, okay, and that is, as we look on on Google Earth here, um, you measure it out, you, you see here that it's it's uh, 227 yards away, okay, and that other stand was was right in here somewhere, um, and it's over 200 yards away, and then this one's this one's no different. This is this is clear. Um, of any of these stands okay this is a a, a, a a minor funnel here I don't know if I have that on the picture I took a picture of this here on Bing maps and I'm gonna show you that um, this here is a is a pretty decent looking spot to me um, it's no different than another spot on this this thing we're gonna talk about you have this old clear cut or whatever here and we'll go back in time here um, and look at that if we can see through the clouds anyways um, see when this thing was clear cut or I, I, thought, I assume it was a clear cut it looked like it was a clear cut on Bing map so I'm going by that um, uh, yeah yeah there we go um, it was cut somewhere goodness grief in between 1999 and 2005, that's a big wide span. It looks like it's cut pretty close to 2005 here. Um, so you got about a 10-year-old clear cut um, here that you're dealing with. Should be some pretty good bedding in here. Um, I don't know when the most recent picture was. This was 2000. This was in uh, June of 2005. You can't see that because I cut it off 
at the bottom, right down at the bottom here. Um, but if you look down at the bottom of your Google Earth, if you're looking on Google Earth, it'll show you down that area just a little bit below this arrow I just drew. Um, will show you the uh, date the picture was took. And I cut it off because the concordance of the area is right beside it. I cut the, the, the picture off right right in here and just right below that like just a little bit on your screen to the date of the image was took right there so this was in june um so you know we're talking you know 10 year old clear cut at least maybe 11 um should be some pretty good bedding but what you have when you have the uh these rivers and stuff is basically is a it for you know when as deer come you know down through this area and stuff anyway and there's actually a slough right here so they'd have to swim so these deer would have to kind of come here um, or deer coming out of here, if they're scent checking this bedding area at all with a westerly wind like this, they're usually going to scent check it on, well, they have to scent check it on the downhill, downwind side. They can't scent check it from the upwind side because they can't smell it. Um, but if they are scent checking this thicket, they're going to swing on that downwind side, okay? And they usually will swing on the edge of that dude. Um, but one thing about that river being here, they're not going to scent check it from over here, and they're sure not going to swim that river to scent check it. So it's going to force them, it's going to force the deer, especially in the rut now. Um, now, if you're talking early season, whole different ball game, okay? But, but we're talking about the rut here. Uh, a buck that's scent checking this, let's say you had a northwest wind, something like, let me erase everything I got here, and we'll start over. Okay, let's say, because you know we have the bedding area here, okay, let's say we have a northwest wind, um, and that would be something in that range, and you're probably going to have some northern winds and some straight west winds. A buck that's scent checking this is really likely um, to cruise this area here, if he's scent checking, or if he's coming out of here, well, shoot, that's off the thing, if he's coming out of this area anywhere, down in here, um, anywhere down in here and he's going to scent check this bedding area that is going to swing him tight to that river okay and then he's very likely going to going to come up somewhere like that because there's a slough right here that's full of water um, but that's going to swing him tight to that river on any north northwest wind and the great thing about that is you get your stand pretty tight to that river um, that blows your scent out in the river. I mean, you almost have a bulletproof situation there. You really do because he's not going to get downwind of you unless, you know, he comes on right on the edge of the river bank or he's on the other side of the river. And if he's on the other side of the river, you probably wasn't going to kill him anyways because I doubt he's going to swim the river. You know, I mean, not saying he's not because he could, but you know what I'm saying. So that gives you a serious... Um, and I put the eye here. It's anywhere in this red, but I really like towards the corner. I'm going to erase this again. I'm going to show you why. I like this corner. Okay. I like this corner tight to these corners of this. Let me let me erase that because I may not explain what I'm trying to say. And I'm going to actually switch pins again and switch colors because I have a red box. Let's go with blue. Okay. This corner, and I'm talking about the corner of this clear cut. And the reason that I like that is a buck being tight to that corner, especially on that northwest wind, okay? He's going to scent check. He may scent check here, okay? And he may cut that corner, okay? Yeah, it still puts you in here, but the thing is he may scent check and roll this way, Okay? So from here, you can actually cover here. So you have two lanes straight. He may come up here and cut here. Okay. I really like the corners. And we're going to look at another spot that's kind of the same way. This stand here, um, I don't have a, really have a problem with. Um, I know you got a food plots and stuff set up. And the only th when I meant to talk about this earlier and I forgot when I started in talking about the deer camp deal. When you're in deer camps, um, let me go ahead and, and get off, get on, go ahead and 
do that and cover that. When you're in deer camps and you had a lot of people, that's when I, I got sidetracked off on this funnel being too close to that. But anyways, um, when you're in deer camps, okay, and you have a, a, a group of people, and we're going to go back to this, this original map that I started looking at. Okay, you have stands all over this thing, okay? And you have a lot of guys that are doing the same thing, and I, I would imagine you've probably got several guys here that's got food plots. When you're in a camp and you got guys that, hey, this guy's putting in this food plot and this guy's putting in this food plot, I'm just going to draw, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit and, and just elaborate on this a little, okay? Um, you know, let's just say Joe over here, He's got this stand here, and he's got him a you know nice little food plot set up, okay. But did Fred over here? Um, he's got the same thing going on, okay. And he's got him a nice little food plot set up, and then uh, uh, Eric over here, he's got him a same thing going on, and then um, some other guys got him the same thing going on for his son, uh, um, and this other guy here, he's got him a stand set up, you know, here for him. He's got him a food plot, or maybe he's baiting, or whatever the case may be. Um, if you see what I'm saying, there's a whole bunch. Of, if that's going on, you've got a whole bunch of food plots all over this place. And the deer, um, when you have that, they're not forced. They can feed anywhere. You know, they can go to this food plot or that food plot or, or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so what you what you really need to do is try to separate yourself from what these other guys are doing. Um, if they are putting in food plots all over the place and are doing a lot of baiting, yeah, it makes it tough. And I see people in forums and stuff complaining about people baiting, complaining about people, uh, you know, doing stuff like that. And you know, because they're not, you know, they're not baiting. We don't we don't bait on our club, and the neighbor club does, and they're getting all the deer. And that's just baloney. Just just to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if I've ever killed a deer off a of bait, and I have done it. Now, it can be a strategy that can be used, but the problem is, is usually the big bucks, um, especially during the rut, are not killed within a close range of that bait. If you're going to kill big bucks, you can let them, them guys bait, and you can hunt 200 yards away from them and kill the buck that's coming into their bait because he's actually going to circle downwind of that bait, okay? So that's... And a lot of guys will, will never believe that. They really won't. Um, but it, it's the truth. It really is. The separating yourself and doing something different. A lot of times, uh, uh, if you're going to be a trophy hunter in a club, is tough because it makes people mad, one, when you start killing bucks and they can't do it. Um, two, you kind of have to go about your own thing and kind of... To, to really kill good bucks most of the time, um, it's better to go at it solo. Don't take nobody else with you to your stands. Don't take anybody with you scouting. Um, it's, it really is. It's better to go solo. And a lot of times it makes you come off as a jerk or stuck up. And, and guys will, well, he's just a jerk or he's stuck up. And then you talk about strategies and stuff. And, you know, trophy hunting and killing good bucks is... There's an art to it, and it takes a lot of work. And if that's what you're trying to do, then when you start having success, it's going to make some guys mad. But you have to choose. For everything you gain, you're going to lose something. Okay? It's it's what what you is what it really is what you want. You know? Do, are you willing to possibly lose a few buddies inside the camp um, because? You are the guy that that's known for killing the the good deer, and then you'll have some some guys that'll say hey, you'll have some some smart guys that'll figure it out and say hey this guy knows what he's doing, um, and then they'll they'll kind of cling to you. But I, I promise you, it's going to make more people mad than not. Okay, but you'll have a, there'll be a, a tight wit that says hey man this guy's figured something out. What the heck's he doing? And they'll They'll, they'll buddy up with you and, and they'll be friends with you and try to figure it out. But then you still, you know, you don't have to be a jerk about it, but, you know, you got to think of what you want to do there. And I, I meant to cover that at, at the beginning, um, you know, and I'm kind of off track of what we were talking about, the rut and everything, but I definitely wanted to talk about that, you know, and 
I really, really feel like doing something different than what everybody else is doing here is, is the thing to do. Um, you know, it really is, especially if you're after a decent bucks. So uh, I hope you understand what I'm, I'm saying there. And anybody else that watches this video here on YouTube, it's it's the same thing. If you're in a hunting club and, um, you know, you're going to have that. That advice is just goes all the way across the board, really. Um, that's one reason I hunt public property and I hunt it by solo. Basically, my wife, kids and stuff, um, they hunt with me and I put them, set them up in spots. But it's because it makes it. People get mad when you kill big bucks and they can't. Um, they really do. I mean, it's it's. The horns on the top of that animal's head will break up friendships, to be honest with you. I, it's it's insane to me, um, but it will. I mean, it just, people get obsessed over, over deer, um, you know. Anyway, so so let's let's keep on going here. Um, we talked about, you know, that, that section, that lower section there. And I'm going to switch, and we're going to look... Um, some of these upper sections. This section here, I mean, it is so tight with hunters that it's almost impossible to find a stand within 200 yards. There's one little funnel right here. I'll show. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Let me go. I forgot. I'm sorry. I got off track with that. Let's go back here. I want to show you this this river. I want to show you this picture um, here. And I, I don't explain what happens. This is the other picture. But this here's that picture. Um, and I marked out the writing so so no one pick it up. This is that picture here. Um, this is that corner of that that here. Here's that corner. Here's that slough I'm talking about right here. And it actually uh, I'm I'm 99% sure it connects to the river. So I, I'm 99% sure this is all water. Now there could be a spot that's high where deer are crossing, and if there is. You know, that would be a good spot to put a stand, you know, especially for a different wind direction or something. But, you know, down in here, in this in this corner somewhere, I, I really feels good. Now, you need to, don't go and, and just pop up a stand there without looking this whole area here over. Okay, but that's it, what I talked about, them deer coming down through here, especially on a northwest wind, or even a west wind. Okay, um... Matter of fact, uh, you know, it would work on a southwest wind. It's not going to work quite as well. But at north, northwest, anything is going to be blowing your scent out into this river. And you can put your stand, you know, fairly tight to the river. Um, and let that your scent blow out in the river. Buck's going to scent check this from the downwind side. And it's going to put him tight to the river. And it, it really is making a funnel created by the wind and created by his drive to breed and him using his nose to scent check this food plot, not food plot, this bedding area, uh, this thicket, this clear cut. It's anything but a food plot. Well, I guess, you know, five years ago it was a natural food plot. When it was about five years old, it was stacked with food. It should still have some food in it and stuff, but it's, it's an area that should have concentrated deer living in it, especially does, and bucks are going to know that and they're going to check it. So, now I want to look, that's, that's what I see in that, that lower section um, here, this area here, that, that's really what I see. Um, you have a funnel here, you have a, a mild funnel right here, you have a little funnel here, but the, the main spot I see is here, and this one here, and then your stand here. Um, I don't remember which stand you said wasn't getting any deer pictures. I think it was this one, and you had a food plot out here and whatever. Um, and and that's really surprises me because of the this being so thick down in here. It really does surprise me um, that, that you're not get, if this if you're not getting pictures here. Surprise me on either one of them really. Um, so we're gonna go up here to the upper part. Okay, um, we're going to look at this. This area here, um, the only thing I've seen, I mean, you have the, the logging and stuff going on, but really the only thing I've seen is the river um, here. 
you know, is um, on easterly. I hit the wrong button there. On easterly winds, you know, winds blowing here, here, and here, which is a uh, this here is a southeast wind, and uh, this is an east wind, and then this is a northeast wind. Okay, anything on them them three wind directions? Um, any bedding? If there's any any bedding, any deer bedded in this area or pretty tight close to that river, is going to force bucks tight to the river when they're scent checking. Um, you know, and it's basically, you know, you just get back in there and you look and see if you see deer trails and stuff, rubs, old rubs. Um, I've honestly on rivers, I don't know what it is, but there seems like there is almost always a dang deer trail right on the edge of that river bank. Um, 15 yards off of it or something. It's like the deer could walk down the river, right down the edge of the river. They just like fall in the river. Um, and there just always seem like there's, especially when there's a swing in the river, um, you know, a, a swing, when I'm saying by swing is say the river's running like, like this here and it, it makes a swing and turns like that or something, or something like that. You know, when it, it, that there's really, it's, it funnels deer that's coming out of here headed that direction tight to that river. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> I seen the river and then one other thing, if you're bow hunter, and you, you're allowed to do it, and this this is not exactly um, your map that your picture your original picture you sent me, and we can look at this one here. But I actually had to bleep, I had to black it out because there was something. But you see, let's just look at it. Try to I blacked out all the writing here. There's nobody hunting up in here, but you see this little corner, this piece. Now there's a house here and a house here. I'm saying if you're a bow hunter. That may really be a good spot because you've got all this up in here and it's just a perfect funnel in between them two houses. And I'll show you that on uh, Google Earth here. Um, you have a house here, house here, and then you actually have something down here. I don't know if it's a house or whatever, but that creates a, a funnel running right up through the middle. I mean, you're almost hunting in people's yards, but... Um, if it's something that's legal and you're not going to get kicked out of the club for doing it, you know, and, you know, I mean, there's, your, uh, you know, 60 yards, you sit in the middle, 30 yards this way, 30 yards that way. I mean, you have to be careful. I wouldn't hunt probably right here. I would hunt, if I was going to do it, I would probably hunt more, you know, back in here, kind of away from the houses a little bit. Maybe. I might hunt right beside there. A house depending on what's coming through there and what the laws are and everything and but I just wanted to show you that so it's something you can look at um, but it's just a you know I mean it's a funnel you got deer if there's deer living in here especially in that in the rut now I mean if there's does up in here um, in the daytime you can bet that at some point a buck's going to come through here you know in between them two houses um, to get over into this wood lot. He's not going to expose himself to to cover. He may walk right through these people's yard too, though. Um, but then he's got this field over here, okay? Um, and then here's no different. I really, really, that really looks pretty good. Um, and then here, I think this is the one you said you had uh, them pictures of them bucks in your food plot, and then they disappeared at deer season. I don't know if you hunted it. Um, if you hunted it and the wind was wrong or something, that may be the reason. And, um, you know, if it is and you have a food plot here, um, you can also check um, downwind of that food plot. you got to remember, especially in the rut, these bucks are going to circle downwind of that stuff. And it's usually about 80 to 120 yards, somewhere in there. They'll circle 80 to 120 yards downwind of the food source as they check it. They'll do the same thing with the bedding area, 80 to 100 yards. This area really surprised me even um, 
even if the deer did smell you or something, it surprised me that they're just completely disappeared. Them two bucks. Because this is thick. Um, you have food that just bumps right up next to it. And that, that just surprises me. Um, it, it's something else, really. Um, now, let's go to this section here. Right here is... Um, This, this section right here, um, I'm going to zoom out on it and we'll look. It's just, it's full of, uh, of, of stands here. I mean, just pretty much, I mean, it, it's difficult to even find a 200-yard gap in between here. But there is a funnel right there that I'm fixing to show you. Um, right here. Now they're crossing the road there. They they should be okay. They should you should have deer crossing this road, um, and 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 being pretty tight to that should be a pretty good spot. I would imagine that your that this is off. Just look. I imagine your property line runs. I don't know, but I, I imagine your property line is here, and then here, and then here, like that. And this is just a few yards off, but. Anyways, there's there's this looks l looks like it could be a, a pretty promising setup here if if everything's there. And I'm gonna explain to you why here. Um, you have if I zoom out, you have a big area of woods down here, a, a really big. I mean, in fact, it connects this other area you're hunting to this area. Okay, and in the daytime, deer would have to walk through these yards, which they will do that. Um, they will walk through people's yards. Um, this area here is the same way. There's a little funnel right up through here. Um, there's, a, there's, you know, right here, but I, I really think the best looking spot is here. But you could check them out. I would check this out and I'd check this out. It shouldn't take you long. And, and see, especially in the rut, if uh, deer are cutting across there. And it looks like there's a ridge, you know, right here. Um, a lot of times them deer will bed on the side of these ridges and stuff and drop down in and out of this. So that's that's something to look at. Other than that, in this, this area, it's so... Um, it's so uh, congested with deer stands within 200 yards. I don't know if you could, you know, you if you could find anywhere else to put a stand. It's not that you wouldn't be 200 yards within somebody here. I mean, there's if you just wanted to. I mean, you could probably here, maybe here. Um, this one's definitely you could hunt somewhere down through here and stuff, but. Um, I think with the with the stuff I'm going to show you is you're going to be fine. Okay, here and the other area is is this area here. There's not um, there's a lot of stands up in this area here. And there's a couple here. Um, there's two here, um, but there's nothing right on this river. This is a big old clear cut, um, and we're going to. Look here how old it is. Um, now here we don't have no info. Let's see. Okay, it looks pretty young right here in 2009. That's 2009. That's still 2009. This is 2008. 2006. Okay, looks like I cut it right around 2005. Okay. Um, and you see these these eyes I have here. Um, a cup. I like this spot, this area right here, down in this corner, somewhere in here. 
Um, I like this corner here, just like I explained earlier, for different wind directions, and I'm going to show you that. If I can find my pen. Um, this one here is going to be a, a northeast. A north wind would be fine, and uh, maybe a north northeast wind. You know, something from from there to there. Um, this corner here. The only problem with this corner is you don't have to ignore these writings. They're going to stay up here. But oh, that's the wrong thing. The only problem with this corner is there's a stand here, and I'm not sure. It's 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 right at 200 yards, I think, from that corner. Okay. And we'll measure that out, and you can see it. You know, that's that's 200 yards there. That stands right. Actually, I think that stands out of out of a way out of 200 yards. I think that stands right in here. Yeah, if you see that road drops down, that stand is just that. There's that black line right there. You. I don't know if you can see it. This little black line right here. It's right there. And if we switch back to uh, Google Earth here, you see that black line right here. And that stand setting like right here, which is over 200 yards away. So I like that. And then the same reason, if bucks are scent checking this big, area they're going to swing tight to that river and that river is going to keep them forced within this area they can't what i mean by that is a lot of times that buck he'll come here and he'll scent check let me move my dang map i forget i'm off my my deal let me move the map oh my goodness move the map up okay a lot of times that old, old buck, he he come down through like this, and he'll scent check 100 yards or so down in there. You know, he may he may come down in, in a distance, something like that, or you know, something like that. But that river is going to keep him forced tight right in here. It should when he's scent checking this on a north wind, it should keep him pretty tight to that river. Okay, and, and especially if you're bow hunting, put him in within bow range. And this is no different here. This corner over here is no different. Now, I have the eye here, um, but, you know, probably more up in here somewhere. Um, and, and maybe even on one of these other eyes, and I'm going to show you that in just a second why I say that. But that's no different. North, uh, northwest, north, north-northwest wind. You know, a buck's going to be scent checking like this. He's going to be scent checking like this. And it's going to put him tight to that river. You're using that river. Plus, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to have deer coming out of this this clear cut and, feed, and and working their way up and down that river. And if there's nobody going back there. And this, I don't know if you have a boat or not. And it may not even be something you're interested in. You may want to just walk in or full wheel or whatever the case may be. But a lot of times on these, these stands on the river... Man, you can access them dudes with a boat, walk 20 yards, silent, leave no scent whatsoever, and you're in your stand, and, I mean, you're right there within bow range of your boat. Um, and, I mean, it's a it's killer setup. And the buck scent checking them big thickets, it pushes them tight to them rivers, um, like on a situation like this, when you have bedding areas set up there tight to them. Now... Um, in case you're wondering what these other eyes are, this is pretty cool, I thought. Um, in some instances, if I can find this, depending on how the, the level that river is, you see there? When that river drops down, that's shallow. Them deer will probably cross right there. That's why you have an eye here and you have one here. 
I really like this one right here because it's good and wide. Now, they'll probably, even when that river's up, even if that water's only a foot or so deep, they're probably going to cross right there. Okay, that makes this 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 area that much better. Okay, um, and that's that's something to really look at. Okay, there's one right here. It's a little bit shallower, but I really like this this shallow spot right here. That's something you want to look at. You want to walk down there on that river bank, take a look at that. You want to? I mean, I would. You know, if you had time, look at all of them here, here, um, and every one of them is within 200 yards away from these other stands. You have nothing to worry about. Them can be killer rut spots. You get bucks cruising, scent checking this thicket, crossing here, coming out of here, crossing here. I mean, you get traffic from deer traffic, buck traffic, you know, from all different directions, and uh, I mean, you, you sit there. If it, if it is what I think, I mean, that's something on aerial photo. There's no way I would not go check that. And I'm so convinced I'd be taking a stand with me and get ready to get set up, you know, somewhere right in there on 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 this on these areas. And I know you can get, I think it was three stands. So, you know, I showed you several spots. You know, it's it, you really got to do some, you're going to have to do some footwork. Um, you know, it is aerial photo and not everything is always like it seems. You know, but, I mean, you you see the river. It, the river is obviously lower here than it is most of the times, and it's high right there. I mean, these deer can cross there. Um, you know, the, the thicket is here. I mean, they're going to sit when they're scent checking these bedding areas. They're going to do it from a downwind side. It's the only possible way they can do it. A lot of times they do it right on the edge. Um, sometimes... They'll, they'll hit a ridge. A lot of times they'll do it on a ridge that runs, you know, on along a, uh, along a bedding area because it gives them vision. They can use their sight plus their, their nose down that downwind, and they'll scent check it from running the side of a ridge, sort of up towards the top kind of deal. Um, but, you know... And them are good. Them are good spots. I really think so. And you may find, you know, deer. You know, because it looks like you have some 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 type of ag activity going on here. It may be hay fields. Um, it, you know, and a lot of times hay they'll use clover, alfalfa, stuff like that. Stuff deer will eat. Um, you know, going on over here. So you could, and then you have a big bedding area here. You may have deer even early season bedding up in here, coming and crossing this river right here, and feeding out into these fields at night. Okay? That's very seriously something to check out. And this one here is no different. I would check this one out, too. I mean, this one's, you know, deer crossing here, and then they're feeding out in this field, man, within just a couple hundred yards. You know, if they're bedded up in here, they cross the river, they're in the field within 400 yards. Okay, I mean, as the crow flies. So, anyways, um, I, I think that's everything on this property. If you, yeah, I, I believe that's pretty much everything. Um, if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to, you know, email me and I'll help you out as much as I can. Um, I appreciate you letting me look at it again. Um, and, you know, I wish you the best of luck, and like I said, if you have any questions, just feel free to email me um, with a question or what have you, and uh, man, I hope you can get into some of these spots and, and, and get you a big buck. I've seen the bucks you had on, on, on pictures of. I don't, I really do not see them bucks going too far. They may, I've had, I have literally had pictures of deer on a camera, and I'm thinking, man, them jokers are gone. And I took another camera and put it up on another spot within, you know, 10 yards and, and put it at a different angle. And I was missing the deer the whole time. And, I mean, there were big, good bucks. I was missing, you know, I got a picture of them once or twice. And I was thinking, man, they're, really, they're using it in daytime, but they're not using it as much as I like. And then they just disappeared. And I put a, another, a second camera up within 20 yards 
of another camera and had it at a different angle and I was getting pictures of these bucks a lot and I was never getting them on the other camera. Both cameras were running at the same time within 20 yards of each other. So I, them bucks that you had, um, that you showed me, I, I, it's hard for me to really, it really is hard for me to believe that them bucks aren't using that no more at all. Um, I think maybe you're just missing the camera somehow. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> they may have uh, um, moved their, uh, adjusted their pattern a little bit when you started hunting it, you know. Um, to avoid you, you you know, you may get in there and, and check it out and, and look. And you may figure out that they may have adjusted their pattern by 100 yards or something. And you may set up, be able to set up on them and, and kill one of them bucks. But anyways, I wish you luck. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, just email me. I appreciate you letting me look at it. Anybody else uh, watch this on YouTube, I hope you guys learn from something from it. I hope, hope you learn something from it, Eamon. And, um, you know, best of luck. Have a good day and bye-bye.